Children are dismissed for Sunday school uh, downstairs in the basement. Uh, thank you, Lynette, for uh, teaching the kids today. Thank you, Tracy, for leading us in worship. If you have your Bibles with you today, if you'd like to turn with me to Philippians uh, chapter 3, we're going to look at verses number 12 to 16. Philippians 3, verses 12 to 16. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize Amen. for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, you too, God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. In our passage in Philippians 3, the Apostle Paul is explaining to us, church, the concept of forward thinking. The Apostle Paul, he was a, a spiritual giant in the eyes of the Philippian saints. And he wanted them to know, though, that he had not yet attained the goals that he states in verses number 10 of Philippians 3. He was still actively pressing on towards those goals that he lays out in verse 10. And Paul knew that he couldn't go about his life dwelling on the past. He couldn't go about dwelling on the failures and the sins that have been forgiven. And he also uh, could not uh, rest on his laurels, the achievements that he had made in the service of the church for Christ. Instead, he wanted to be found straining toward uh, what laid ahead. He wasn't thinking about yesterday. He wasn't thinking about what was behind him, church. But he was pressing on toward what the Lord had in store. He was forward thinking. And he was straining toward what the Lord had in store for him. And he uses a, a very strong word. Uh, to express uh, this idea. And the word would kind of be seen in an athletic um, context or a chariot uh, race. And the word that we see that Paul is using to strain that concept, to strain that idea that he's not dwelling on the past is the word goal. Every fiber of Paul's being was set on the goal, set on the purpose of his Christian life, and he was focused on the future. He wasn't focused on the past. He had a goal in mind. And this morning, I want us to notice uh, two keys for us to be a future-focused church, or two keys for us to be future-focused believers. The first key for us to be a future-focused church is that we don't be satisfied. We're not, we're not to be satisfied, church, with the status quo. Verses number 12 to 13 
tells us this. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Paul is telling the church at Philippi not to rest on its laurels. This was a, a great church, the church at, at Philippi. And Paul uh, said, don't be satisfied with the way things are. Don't be satisfied with where we are now. Don't be satisfied with just keeping up with the status quo. Because he's telling them that won't get the job done. Friends, we have a, a daunting task here at Bethel. We have a, a huge task here in Calvinton. That's the task of evangelizing our community. And to get the job done, we need to have a focused devotion. In verse number 13, Paul says, but one thing I do. One thing I do. Church, we, know we must be focused on our call as Christians and on our call as a church. We know that no athlete succeeds by going out and competing in absolutely every sport. They're focused on their very best one. They give all their energy. They give all their preparation to what they do best. And that's how it is to be in our spiritual lives as well. We are to focus on what Christ has called us to do. And then we are to go and we are to do what Christ has called us to do with everything we have to glorify God. With everything we have, we're to go and do what he's called us to do. When we as Christians are focused on what Christ has called us to do, when we as a church are focused on what Christ has called us to do, then we don't feel swamped in our spiritual walk. We don't feel overwhelmed but we feel refreshed as we allow God's power to flow through us. Friends, today, what's one thing that God has called you to do? One thing today that God has called you to do. Now, not only are we to have a focused devotion but church, we need to have focused direction. Paul says in verse number 13, But one thing I do, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Paul is saying that he's going forward in the direction that God has for him. And Paul is telling us, go forward in the direction that God has for us. Paul's telling us in Philippians 3, know what you're called to do and then go and do it. Forgetting here in verse number three, uh, 13, it, it means to neglect to give any thought. Don't even think about it. Forgetting what is in the past. Forgetting what is behind, uh, behind us. Ahead in verse number 13 means the thing that is in front of us, the, the matter that is at hand, that is where our focus is. You know what 
really hinders us in life at times. We, we tend to waste a lot of time thinking about what we should do and then failing to do the work that is right there in front of us. We, we spend a whole lot of time thinking and asking, God, what are you wanting me to do? God, what are you calling me to do today? And it's not, it's good for us to seek God's will. It's good for, him, for us to, to ask the Lord, to inquire of the Lord. But sometimes, church, we just got to open up our eyes and see that it's right there in front of us what he's called us to do. I, I get very frustrated in life with, with people that know that they should do the thing in front of them, but they fail to do it. Church, we're never going to go forward as believers and as churches if we don't go in the direction that God has for us and simply get to work. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. The future-focused church does what God calls that church to do and heads in the direction that God has for it. It's not satisfied with the status quo, but it's pressing forward. Now, the second key to uh, a future-focused church mentality is to not grow stagnant in their spiritual growth. Look at verses 14 to 16 of Philippians 3. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too, God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Now, the Apostle Paul declares that he is pressing onward, that he's moving forward. He's not being stuck in the past. He's saying whatever holds us back from glorifying God, whatever causes us to get held back from the call that God has on our lives, whoever hinders us in the race, we're to let go of those things. God is telling us, church, through Paul, uh, that we're to grow up spiritually. He even uses the word mature in verse number 15. But how do we become mature as churches and as Christians, what do we need to do or what do we need to know in order to be spiritually mature in our faith in Christ? Let's, let's take a look at what it takes for us to grow in our relationship and our faith. And first, we need some spiritual determination. Paul says in verse number 14, I press on toward the goal to win the prize. Church, sometimes for us to mature as believers, we just simply need to be determined. We just simply need to be determined that we're going to press on. We need to be determined that we're going to grow as believers. We just need some spiritual determination 
that I am moving forward, that I am pressing on, not that we're going to stay where we are, but that we're going to, that we're determined that we're going to grow. If we want to mature as believers, we need to have that determination that yes, I am going to grow in my relationship with Christ. The second way that we grow spiritually is through spiritual discipline. Verses 15 and 16 says to us, all of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. In any kind of athletic race, it's not enough just for us to, to go and to run uh, hard and win the race. But the runner, the athlete, also has to run hard, obeying and following the rules. In the Greek games, the, the judges were very strict about this. And any infringement of those rules disqualified the athlete immediately. And Paul, in Philippians 3, he emphasizes the importance of the Christian remembering the spiritual rules that are laid down in the Word. Too many of us at times, we've disqualified ourselves at some point or another. We've disqualified ourselves in areas of service. Sometimes we've even forsaken our call because we've failed to develop the spiritual discipline uh, in our lives. But church, if we're to mature, if we're to grow in our relationship with Christ, we need to have that spiritual discipline. We need to be disciplined that we're going to live according to to what does the word of God say for us today? And when we choose that we're going to go, we're going to live according to what does the word say. Church, that's going to help us to grow. That's going to help us to prosper in our relationship with Christ. As we close this morning, if we refuse to accept the status quo and we focus our devotion, our priority in fulfilling God's call, and focus our direction by serving Him. Church, if we refuse to be stagnant in our spiritual growth, and we have a determination to grow and develop spiritual discipline in our lives, then church, we will have a future that Christ will be blessing as a church. We'll see that our church will begin to grow as we refuse that we're not going to follow the status quo, that we're going to be determined that we're not going to go uh, stagnant, but we want our relationship with Christ to grow. Church, let's determine today to make a difference for his glory, for his kingdom. Amen? Let's pray together. Lord God, we just thank you that you call us not to be locked in on our past, not to be locked in on yesterday, on the mistakes of yesterday, but also not even to be locked in on the blessings of yesterday because you have something new for us today. And Lord, as a church, we're hearing your word today that's telling us that we're not to be stuck in the past, but we're to press forward in what you have for us today. So as a church and as individual believers, we're choosing today that we're going to move forward. 
We're choosing today that we're going to go forward in our relationship with you. Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory in your name. Amen. Tracy, can you lead us in the hymn, All to Jesus I Surrender? Can you lead us in that one? Let's all stand together as we uh, sing our hymn in closing, All to Jesus I Surrender. number 366 in our hymn books number 366 and if you desire prayer this morning i just encourage you to make your way to the altar as we sing this together i'd love to have the opportunity to pray with you today number 366